today on the Budweiser Boxing Series, rising star David Tua hopes to continue his climb up the heavyweight ladder with a victory over Russian Oleg Muskayev. The Terminator from New Zealand has punched his way to a 26-0 record with 10 first-round knockouts. Today, Tua continues his torrid pursuit in quest of the heavyweight championship. Fernell Whitaker and Oscar De La Hoya, two of the most charismatic fighters in the world. Whitaker is 41-1, and one, a five-time world champion looking for a resounding victory to cement his place in boxing history. But golden boy Oscar De La Hoya is undefeated in 23 bouts and looking to stake his claim as the best pound-for-pound -pound fighter in the world. They Live to preview their upcoming title bout. It's boxing's best coming up on the show. of heavyweight action, David Tua and Oleg Maskaya. Hi everyone, I'm Tim Ryan. Inside here, ringside at Bally's Park Place, and we've got quite an afternoon of boxing for you now with this heavyweight matchup, a key one, an important one, featuring David Tua, one of the most talked about young heavyweights on the boxing scene today, and he takes on Oleg Maskayev. And that'll be followed by a live interview with Oscar De La Hoya and Pernell Whitaker. They meet a week from tonight in Las Vegas for Whitaker's WBC welterweight crown. Well, I'm joined, as always, on our boxing coverage by our Gil Clancy. And uh, Gil, I know I'm one of uh, many who are excited to see David to a lot of the folks around the country haven't seen this young man. We've had lots of retreads coming back to get heavyweight championship bouts, but here's an unbeaten 24-year-old deservedly in the top 10. Uh, Tim, I'm very impressed by this guy. He has the stamina, the power, and the ability to take a punch to become the next heavyweight champion of the world. Well, we've seen him in action with a lot of quick knockouts like this one, and he's shown plenty. There's, there was a guy that was a world a, a champion, international champion. He stopped that guy. Now we go to the 12th round. This is the stamina I'm talking about. 12th round, you still see that power. And here we're going to see right now the finish off of a real good, tough fighter in the 12th round. Well, there is David Tua, born in Western Samoa, lives in Auckland, New Zealand. And when he's over here with his boxing career underway in the U.S., he lives in Wayne, New Jersey. Very proud. Samoan and uh, he credits his time in Auckland as uh, the opportunity that he got to develop into a professional fighter after some very good amateur success. He was a bronze medalist in the 1992 Olympic Games. Now, his opponent today, Oleg Baskayev. He had an outstanding amateur career in the Soviet Union, the former Soviet Union. He's from Kazakhstan, big, strong guy. He'll definitely be a problem for Tua. If he should win, he'll be in the top 10. Well, Tim, uh, strength is the key word. He's a very strong guy with a good left jab and a straight right hand. But can his left jab control Tua? That's the question. Well, he's confident. He's ready. He understands the importance of this fight. He's lost only once. That was to Oliver McCall. So it'll be Tua and Muskaya when CBS Sports coverage of the Budweiser Boxing Series continues after this word from your local station. Crisp, clean, classic taste. Well, let's take a look at our tale of the tape for this live heavyweight action. David Tua, Oleg Muskaya. Tua, just 24 years of age, already in the top 10. He stands at 5'10 and came in at 223 and a quarter. Muskaya, the 28-year-old, taller, with a longer reach and 10 pounds heavier than David Tua. The rules are actually a combination today of World Boxing Council rules and those of the state of New Jersey. There will be no standing eight count. Fighter cannot be saved by the bell in any round. There is no three now knockdown rule, and if there is an accidental foul that uh, causes the fight to end before four rounds, it will be a technical draw. And now for our ring introductions, let's go to our ring announcer, Michael Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Bally's Park Place, Atlantic City, and CBS Sports Budweiser Boxing Series. Main events monitor and your undisputed, undefeated king of beers, Budweiser, present 12 rounds of boxing for the WBC International Heavyweight Championship. Sanctioned by the New Jersey State Athletic Control Board, Boxing Commissioner Larry Hazard Sr., Chairman Jerry Gormley, Board Members Gary Shaw and Stephen Katz, Deputy Commissioner John Greco. The three judges scoring at ringside are Miguel Acuna, Henry Grant, and Steve Weisfeld. 
And when the bell rings in charge of the action, referee Lindsey Page, Jr. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from Bally's Park Place, Atlantic City, uh, let's get ready to rumble! In the red corner, weighing in at 233 pounds and wearing black, with a professional record of 20 victories, 16 by knockout, with only one loss, a native of Ave, Kazakhstan, and now fighting out of Brooklyn, New York, here is the challenger, Oleg Moskaya. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the blue corner, also wearing black but trimmed with white, weighing 223 pounds. His professional record, 26 victories without a loss, 22 by knockout. He's ranked number four in the world by the WBC from Auckland, New Zealand. Here is the WBC international heavyweight champion, David the Terminator II. Referee Lindsay Page waiting for Tua to join the company well, here in the center of the ring. I want a good, clean fight. I want you to obey my commands at all times. Touch gloves, go back to your corner until I tell you to come out. So 12 rounds of heavyweight action. David Tua, Oleg Maskayev, and Tua has been compared to in style and a lot to do with his size, of course. He's a shorter heavyweight uh, compared to his first idol. He admits was Rocky Marciano, and he does fight somewhat in great Marciano style and more recently of course people think he reminds them in style of Mike Tyson and again a lot of it has to do with his size and the fact that he uh, loves to rip those left hooks to the body and has a lot of power as his knockout record 22 knockouts in 26 fights with evidence Miskayev has lost only once he is 20 and 1 as a professional with 16 KOs. Then we're going to find out fairly just how effective Maskayev's left jab is going to be. That's going to be the key to this fight. David Tua ranked number four in the world by the WBC, number eight by the WBA, number seven by the IBF. Definitely uh, should he continue on the successful track record he's had so far, uh, he figures to be very much in a title picture within the next year. Now, Tim, the, you, you mentioned Rocky Marciano. The thing I like about Tua, one of the things, is the fact that he has this tremendous stamina. See on his trunks, 100% Samoan. He is very proud of his heritage. He comes from a small island in western Samoa. His father was a fighter. He saw the early potential, and David Tua took him to bronze medal. Now, Tim, Moskayev seems very, very tentative to me at the moment. He's really not looking to do too much offensively. And you know, when sometimes when you're waiting to get hit, that's when you get nailed. Maskayev would have been in those 92 games. Potentially, they could have fought each other, but he was ill at the time. He was favored to be on the Soviet Union, the unified team it was called, then you may recall. Favored to be on that team as the heavyweight representative. He missed it because of illness. A two-time Soviet champion, super heavyweight division. And a silver medalist in the 1992 World's Championships. Again, Tula is doing all the forward motion, putting a lot of pressure on Moskayev. And Moskayev is trying to punch and get out of the way at the same time. That's something that you can't do, Tim. He has to step in with the jab, nail him with the jab, and then move out. Can't do both. Approaching the 30-second mark to go here in the first round. I have showing his educated jab and two are doing what he does, does best, forcing the issue, keeping the pressure on. And there's a big left hook to the ear of Maskayev. The combination back, kind of a tentative right hand behind the left jab from Maskayev. That's been the key, Tim. All his punches have been tentative. Final seconds of round number one, scheduled for 12. Want a bud? Sure. In Atlantic City, 12 rounds of heavyweight action scheduled. David Tua on the left of your screen with white trim on his black trunks. And Oleg Maskayev from Kazakhstan, now living in Brooklyn, New York, pursuing his professional boxing career. Let's 
guy began as a pro in 1993 after that distinguished amateur career. He won 10 professional fights in a row. Came to the U.S. in 1995. His first fight over here against Jim Harrison in Boston, Mass. He won that in a four-round KO. His last outing, second-round stoppage of Rodney Blunt, February of this year. Only lost to Oliver McCall. He was stopped in the first round. Said he just simply wasn't mentally or physically prepared for that fight. Now Tua bangs up and down to the head and body, catching Moskayev in a stationary position on the ropes. I think Moskayev is going to get hit with a couple of punches just to loosen him up, Tim. Right now he's showing Tua a lot too much respect. Single, this guy I've married, in fact, has his family here. His wife, Svetlana, and three daughters, Anna, Alexandra, Alessia. All here watching Daddy in action. Big left hand got through over the guard of this guy. Washington blocked him. If that got through, you could see Moskaya doing tricks with his legs. <laughs> Tua starting to try and find the range to the head with that left hook. And now when Muscaya's jab is loosening up a little bit, Tim. There we can see. Maybe he needed to get hit with those couple of punches. Minute to go in the second round, and Muscaya finds a right hand. Moved by Mascaya, moving over to the right, so he'll get near with that left hook. And now he's starting to tattoo Tua with that jab. Tattoo Tua, how's that, Tim? Pretty good. Vicious left hook fell a little short from Tua. Caught on the glove by Mascaya. Mascaya trained by Americans Tommy Gallagher and Bob Jackson. Final seconds of round number two. I'll tell you, I love the round number three live from Atlantic City. David Tua and Oleg Muskai of heavyweights scheduled for 12. David Tua on the left of your screen, black trunks and white trim. Oleg Muskai from Kazakhstan and now Brooklyn, New York. Circling to the right of your screen. fighters the dads were boxers and that's how they got started as youngsters in the sport as amateurs this guy has father boxed in the soviet military like most of Muskayev's early professional fights took place while he was stationed in uzbekistan country now an independent country of course adjacent to his native land of kazakhstan nice combination by Askaev, Tim, right up a good left hook. He's scoring now. One more confidence, certainly, and less tentative is Askaev. Rounds two and three, finding the range, using his reach, and landing that jab. Very good concentration on, on Askaev's part. And there's that little move to the right. That takes. Tua off his left foot and he can't get that hook off. There's a left hook, a little bit lower. A little bit south of the border. Third round scheduled for 12. David Tua, 26 and 0 with 22 KOs. This guy has lost only once in 21 fights, and he landed a good right hand, right on the mush of David Tua. And then remaining round three. Referee won Tua to keep his punches up. Lindsey Page, the referee from Trenton, New Jersey.
Tua better not depend on scoring that one punch knockout because in the meanwhile, Askaya is piling up points. In a good round of the Kazakhstani and there's Tua reaching with that left hook. He just hadn't been able to get close enough to put punches together. Askaya, I think, has been working his distance very well in rounds two and three. Round number four scheduled for 12. Tim Ryan and Gil Clancy live in Atlantic City at Valley's Park Place. On the left of your screen is the number four ranked David Tua. 26 and 0. And now on the left of your screen, Oleg Maskayev. And Tua has never shown himself to be frustrated in his 26 previous fights. But here may be a guy that's going to cause him some problems that way. What's he got to do well, to change Tim, the trend? Uh, Tim, he's been very predictable, Tua. He's walking in. Not moving his head, not getting low. He's got to get underneath that jab of Moscaya. But you can see he walks straight in. Standing too straight up. Same pressure all the time. No side to side movement. Not bobbing and weaving. He's got to go underneath that left jab and come up or either go or throw that left hook to the body. A little more in the style of his original idol, Rocky Marciano. That's exactly right. He start banging to that body. And now Moscaya has starting to bleed a little bit from the nostril. In his last outing, Tua against David Izanrite, it took him a number of rounds in that fight to find his way inside the big man. Eventually stopped him in 12. Moscaya also, again, is going to have to loosen up a little bit and really get to Tua's respect. He's a little tentative, back in the tentative mode again. Yeah, Moscaya did a little bob and weave that time. Moscaya definitely finding the range with each round uh, with that left jab using his reach, and that is his best skill. European style straight stiff jab, and a little warning again from referee Lindsay Page for low blows to Tua. Again, the Moscaya was waiting to get hit, and when you wait to get hit, you get hit. Has to show a lot more offense. There's a good left hook by Moscaya. Has to show a lot more offense in this fight. Under a minute round number four, scheduled for 12. You know, Tim, some judges, they'll give a fighter credit for winning a round by just being aggressive. They forget it has to be effective aggressiveness. And so far, two is walking in, walking in, but not really scoring too much. Neither fighter has fought top quality opposition in the early part of their career. So this is one of those early kind of crossroads matches. Two are much more well regarded in the rankings. Chopping overhand right after a good left to the body. Final seconds of the fourth. Round number five, Tim Ryan and Gil Clancy in Atlantic City. We're watching live heavyweight action. Remember, coming up, it'll be a conversation with Pernell Whitaker and Oscar De La Hoya. meet a week from tonight in Las Vegas for Whitaker's welterweight crown. And again, Moscaya starts out scoring with that left jab, and Tua is really not, he's not sharp, Tim. He's not countering that jab the way he should. I've got it all even after four, and I think uh, you gave one round to Moscaya that I gave to uh, Tua Gill, so it's a close fight through four. Yes, yeah, so I have a 2 1 1 Moscaya. But again, sometimes these judges, they see the one guy going forward, but uh, Tua really is not landing that much. Tim. There's a good combination by Tua. Trying to spring to it. Good left hook by Tua. Missed the right, but landed the left hook right behind it. Short chopping right landed by Moskaya. And a good straight right hand lead landed. Right hand doesn't have too much on it though, Tim. And again, he's scoring points. Yes, indeed. Tua really has to get low, Tim, and stop banging to that body. I just stay in that body for a while to bring Moskaya's hands down. Should be pumping with both hands to that body. This guy of 21 pro fights had 128 amateur bouts. He was 108 and 10. You mentioned two times Soviet super heavyweight champion and silver medalist in the world championship. And he's an experienced guy. And there's coming into that weave with a left hook. That's exactly what Tua has to do. But he, again, he can still throw that left hook downstairs. 
There, he should have threw it downstairs that time. He had a perfect opportunity. Didn't let the punch go. So far, Tua, in my opinion, has been very flat. And Muskaya has stayed with his best stuff, and that's that stiff left jab that's been landing. And again, scoring points. And a minute to go in the fifth. Tua, Tua is just doing too much posing. Not enough punching. Winging that left hook a little bit short with it. Raise the face of Muskayev. He's not been able to do any damage so far. And he is a big puncher, David Tua. 22 KOs and 26 starts. There's a good left hook. That landed perfectly timed counter. Muskayev staying closer, though. He seems to be building some confidence as the fight's going on. Combination by Naskaya. Final seconds of round number five. I know just about every garage in town. We're back for round number six of the scheduled 12-round heavyweight bout, and they were giving David Tua what for in his corner. Lou Duva saying you're laying back, you've got to get on the case against Oleg Muskaya. We've given three rounds in a row to Muskaya. He's been building in confidence, and Tua hasn't been able to get inside to do any damage. This guy has been keeping Tua at a distance, exactly where he wants him, and scoring points. They're not devastating punches, but they're point scores, as those two jabs were. And Tua, again, Tim, if, if, a, if a guy throws a punch at you and misses you, you got to punch. If he hits you, you have to punch. And every time Muskayev hits uh, Tua, Tua just does not count him. He's trying to land that one big punch. He may sometime during the fight do it, but he hasn't been able to do it so far. Two is the best wins against John Ruiz, Darrell Wilson in his last outing, perhaps the best of those three. David, he's on retail. Tough fight. It went 12, but he got his man, a bigger guy like Muskaya, in the 12th round. And you see Muskaya scoring with that jab, Tim. Now a combination. And, and he blocks two of his punches. They make a lot of noise, but they're landing on the arms. Tua did get in the last right hand straight down the pipe without any serious effect. But this guy is showing good defense against this walk-in attack from Tua. Tua never changes anything, Tim. There's no up to the mark, away from the mark. Same way all the time. You know exactly where he is. He's right at you in a straight-up position. A short guy can take advantage of the fact he's short by making himself even shorter. Two are unbeaten. Muskayev's lost only once. He's 20 and one. Huge fight for both of them. Tua cannot afford the loss in terms of his movement toward a heavyweight title opportunity. Presently in the top 10, a victory by Muskayev would put him in the top 10. And the punch was blocked. That punch was blocked. I mean, Muskayev is really just playing tap, tap, tap. There's no power in his punches at all. But they are scoring. Coming to the end of round number six. A little more intent on the right hand from Muskayev. Action from round six, two up. Finally finding a little space there between the gloves of Muskayev with the right hand following his left that was blocked, but he has not had much success putting any kind of serious scoring blows into Oleg Muskayev. So we have a head on the cards right now. We're into round number seven, scheduled for 12. Good right hand by, by Tua, and then again, good left hook to the body by Tua. There's a right hand back from Muskayev. A little left uppercut that got through. Again, not a lot of sting on them. Every now and then he'll wing one with a little more uh, serious intention, but it's not what he's been doing effectively. He's just been scoring with uh, punches that don't have a lot of power, but they get points. You can easily 
see why, my, why Maskaya was an amateur champion and fights strictly in the amateur mode. Pop, 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 score points, score points. So he's not looking to get the two out of there with a punch. And Tua obliges by walking right into that left hand. Again, when Tua weaves, Tim, and he has, and he has that must, must guy have missing, he doesn't wing, he doesn't counter. Low blow. These two are starting to go to the body a little bit more here now in round seven. Combination scored by Miskayev is controlling the issue here, Toa Tua allowing him to do so. Miskayev's mouth is now wide open, though, Tim. That may be an indication that the pressure that Tua's been putting on it could be having an effect, despite the fact that Tua hasn't been exactly devastating with his punching power or his quantity of punches. Well, he was in a close battle with his Andrete right throughout the first 11 rounds, and he eventually wore down the bigger man and knocked him out in the 12th. Let's see what develops here is this is also a 12-rounder. We're in the seventh. And when Tua makes that move with his head, Tim, and Moskayev misses, he has to wing. I mean, Moskayev is attached to his arm, so he's certainly going to be there if you make a miss. And now Tua has a little swelling under his right eye from those jabs of Moskayev. Landed another stiff one right on the swelling. A little blood on the inside bridge of the nose of Tua. This is round number eight, scheduled for 12. Heavyweights David Tua in the foreground, 100% Samoan, and uh, now on the right of your screen from Kazakhstan and Brooklyn, New York, Oleg Muskayev. And we've got Muskayev comfortably ahead here. Tua's got to pull things together the way we see it to prevent his unbeaten record showing up with one loss. Tim, he's not showing any fire at all, despite the fact that Muskaya is not a hard puncher. He just doesn't react when he gets hit. He has to punch back when he gets hit. Make this into a war. Now he should really take off anytime he gets Muskaya against the ropes. But he just follows him around the ring, straight up position, and walks right into that left jab. Just not getting off. And you can see Muskaya keeps his hands good and high. And he's blocking those wide left hooks up to this point. Good right hand by, good right hand, good left hook to the body by Tua. Hard punches. And again, Tim, you know, we, we may be a little surprised at the scoring of the judges because a lot of times, again, just for aggressiveness, uh, they'll give a guy a round. Well, but even that flurry, he stopped short. You know, he could have thrown more punches. Again, he that's uh, still free to punch. He just isn't showing any fire. Got to get the little bit of his blood up in the air. Start going somewhere. Now he's got to not one punch. He's got to let them go. There's a big right hand that got through from David Tua. The left had been blocked by the arm of Maskayev, but he didn't rock him with it. No, he Maskayev didn't. still clear-headed, clear-eyed. Maskayev has taken some of Tua's best shots and really hasn't shown any sign of a wobble at all up to this point. Well, we said the 28-year-old is a big, strong guy at 233. Well-conditioned athlete. Yeah, he took over the right hand that time, this guy. That was about as hard as he's throwing a right hand. Tua was trying to get himself into some kind of action. Yeah, that's when he should count it. Again, he has he has Muskaya missing punches, but he just doesn't count it. He can't pull the trigger. minute in round eight. David Tua getting himself in all kinds of problems here, or for that matter, he may be uh, exposed here as a less talented than observers have thought, being in against Oleg Meskayev. We'll find out. Again, he slipped the punch, no counter. Final seconds of the eighth round. Still a highly regarded David Tua, unable to unload.
get online. You're looking at Oleg Muskaya from Kazakhstan, now living in Brooklyn, New York, and he may be en route to a huge upset in the heavyweight ranks here. He has a good record of 20 and 1, but his highest ranking is number 27 in the world by the WBC, whereas David Tua ranked in the top 10 by all of the three important organizations. But struggling here against Oleg Maskaev is making his mark so far. And remember, in his last outing, Tua came up with a 12th round knockout of a man similar in style and size. David Izanrije. No no. No reaction from Tua, Jim. Anytime a guy throws those little pity pat combinations, Tua should be blasting right back. But he just isn't doing it. There again, three punches by Maskaya, no return. Another punch by Maskaya, another one, and no return from Tua. He has to really, again, make it a war. Punch with the guy. That's the way he's going to nail him. Otherwise, he's going to just follow him around like this until the fight's over. It's been a flat performance so far by David Tua. Lives here in New Jersey when he's not home in New Zealand. And he's on home territory to that extent. National television, but so far, a disappointment. Does have the power to come up with that one big blow, but he's in against a strong man in Muskaya. Muskaya shows good powers of concentration, Tim. End of this round, we'll be talking to Pernell Whitaker and Oscar Delaware over the course of the next couple of rounds between rounds about their huge fight next Saturday night, week from tonight in Las Vegas. Muskaya, but not giving any ground here, even when Tua attempts to get a little flurry going, Muskaya staying right with him. Good combination by Muskaya. Under a minute to go in the ninth. I have evidenced a lot of respect for what Tua's accomplished so far, but certainly indicated no fear when we talked to him yesterday. Again, that left hook was a devastating left hook, but blocked by Muskaya. <laughs> 30 seconds left. No indication in this round from Tua that he's suddenly going to explode. Leaping in with a left hook, partially blocked. Did land on the ear of Muskaya. Just missed with a winging right hand, did Tua. That could have been a knockout blow. And that's the end of nine. And we'd like to go quickly to Pernell Whitaker, WBC welterweight champion. Oscar Delahoya, the challenger, moving up to 147 pounds. And Oscar at his camp in Big Bear, California. Pernell Whitaker in Chandler, Arizona. Let's start first with uh, Pernell. Uh, you are the champion. Uh, Pernell, you've got a, a young star coming up against you, and you've given, I guess, uh, people uh, who think that maybe at age 33 you're starting to, starting to show a little bit of wear. Came off the canvas before you won the last fight. What's your reaction to that? My reaction to that is that all that's behind me. You know, and, and now I'm looking forward to this. This is the biggest fight. This is the fight fans fight. This is the world's going to be watching. All of those expectations that people say in those last couple of fights were, are behind me. Look at my 12 years before those. Look at the fights before those and before you make accusations or anything in the great career that I've had. But now all that's behind. Let's get, let's get to the point of this fight and what it means, and it's, this, this is gonna be one of the, it's like going to the Academy Awards and putting <laughs> on an Academy Awards show. All right, well, Oscar knows about Academy Awards being as, uh, that's his name, of course, and we'll, we'll hear Oscar's uh, rebuttal at the end of this 10th round. This is scheduled for 12, heavyweights live from Atlantic City. David Tua has really struggled here against Oleg Muskaya, and on our cards, he needs a knockout to win. And uh, Muskaya, I mean, it really is not showing too much respect for uh, Tua at the moment. Anytime Tua starts winging punches, Muskaya answers back. I think that's been the case since about round six, and it's just gotten more so. Confidence growing. Tua has been unable to intimidate him, and, and that's definitely a part of his style. And you can see Muskaya just a little bit of movement to the right, back to the left. 
Doesn't take much. And again, Tua just walks right in in a straight line, right into those left jabs. And again, when Tua slips a punch, he just doesn't counter. Very flat performance, Tim. And this guy has been in control of this fight as we see it, but uh, we have to remind viewers that in his last outing, suddenly in the 12th round against a fatiguing David Izanrite, Tua exploded and scored a knockout. So far, I would say Mascaev is in better shape physically at this point than Izanrite was. And Tua put a lot more punching pressure on Izanrite. He hasn't hurt Mascaev at all. There's a winging right hand. That got through, and that big jaw of Mascaev, he just shook it off. Again, Tua has plenty of head motion now, Tim, but he's not there is what he has to do. When he slips that punch, he has to come back up with that left hook. Finally get, did get one of those big left hooks in, but no damage done. Oleg Naskaya, very much a capitalist here in the United States now. He said, this is a business. I've got a wife and three children. That's why I'm fighting, not for the fun of it. And he lands a left to the ear of David Tua. Again, there's Tua doing all that bobbing and weaving, but he doesn't come up with a punch. Look, weave, weave, weave. You got a punch. There he's going up. Under the 32nd mark, we go in round number 10. There's right. the left hook that got through. Short Mus to the right. Muskayev is now starting to show a little signs of fatigue, Tim. And a lot of pressure put on him. There's a left that got through and a left that missed from Tua. Muskayev did land one combination back. Tua stepping it up here a bit in the 10th. Final seconds. Round number 10. And he lands a left hook. There's Tua. There's the bell ending round 10. Let's go quickly to Oscar Deloy in Big Bear, California. Oscar stepping up to 147 pounds, and I guess uh, boxing fans might ask you about uh, having been such a uh, knockout star, uh, having to go 12 against Gonzalez in your last outing. What did you learn from that? And what were your feelings about going the distance? Well, what I learned from that fight was uh, always be ready for any opponent. I uh, seriously did take Miguel Angel Gonzalez uh, very lightly and now that fight when I went 12 rounds I felt in great shape um, but I didn't train as hard so for this fight here against Pernell Whitaker I'm in the best shape of my life now how do you regard Pernell Whitaker what, what's your feeling about this opponent he's such a great star well I've been training for a very dangerous Pernell Whitaker um, a very fast uh, a very difficult boxer so um, the style that I've been using here in the gym I'll uh, present to Pernell Whitaker April 12. It's going to be a very difficult fight, but um, I'm prepared for it. Well, thank you very much, Oscar and Pernell. It should be a very exciting battle. Boxing fans are looking forward to it. It's a week from tonight in Las Vegas, and we'll see you out there, lads. Good luck to both of you. Uh, Tim, Tua was on a roll at the end of that last round. Finally started to land some good, solid punches, but as you had mentioned, it hasn't bothered the uh, Moscow have one single bit. He's still, still right there, still throwing his combinations, still moving around. Scheduled for 12 or in the 11th. Moscow, as we see it, has control of this fight. Can David Tua pull it out here as he did in the 12th against David Izanrite? Undefeated in 26 with 22 KOs, but a flat performance so far by David Tua. Overhand right, landed to the chin, not much effect. And Tim, again, uh, let me remind you that a lot of judges, they're just watching, watching one guy go forward and the other guy go backwards. It's not just aggressiveness, it's effective aggressiveness, and Tua has not been effective up to this point. There's a good left hook by Tua. And he's got and a right. right. He's, he's, got, got, he's got him in trouble here in the 11. David Tua, and they've stopped it. David Tua with a knockout in the 11th round. Well, we were questioning him, and he came up big again late in the fight. An 11th round stoppage. David Tua. He remains unbeaten at 27-0, having all kinds of problems against Mascaya, not fighting an impressive fight at all at 
Kelly, 11th round, finally that steady pressure resulting in a knockout opportunity and two big shots. The referee saw the eyes literally spin in the face of Oleg Naskayev and stepped in quickly, Lindsey Page, the referee, to stop it. Let's take another look at that stoppage. The left hook there over the glove, that hurt him. He got a clean right to the jaw, but it was that left hand there that was the really damaging blow. A couple of freebies here with Muscaev out of it. And then that left hook up, he really didn't even need. Lindsey Page jumps in and says, that's enough. You see it again. Again, you see two, and now we mentioned he had been on a roll at the end of the last round, Tim. And he just continued on that roll. When he gets you hurt, he is one dangerous guy. Look at the stamina he has. This is the 11th round of a fight, and he still has all that power. That's what I liked about David Tua. He did it in 12 against David Isanrate in his last outing, although he fought better during the course of that fight. Here, we had him well behind, but he came up with the knockout blows and is undefeated in 27. We'll be back to talk to the winner in a moment. We're back at Bally's Park Place where David Tua pulled out with an 11th round knockout of Oleg Miskayev. And uh, tell me, uh, David, we had you well behind on the cards. I got to tell you, we scored only three rounds going into that 11th for you. It seemed like a flat performance and suddenly explode with a knockout win. What's your view of it? Uh, first of all, uh, first of all, uh, we need a longer. Mom, if I forget, love it, boy. Uh, first of all, I thank God um, for this great victory today. And, uh, you know, it's one of those days I, I, uh, I have no... Uh, uh, excuses. I make no excuses whatsoever. I have to give uh, Oleg Maskev uh, uh, a lot of credit for this fight today. And uh, this fight is over. We're going to move on to uh, June, 7. Uh, June 7 HBO. Okay, okay. Well, now, now, was he just that much more difficult for you than you expected, David, uh, David before you got a chance to take him out? Oh. Were, you, were you surprised at the way he fought? Like I said, I make no excuses. You know, I, I felt a bit flat uh, going in the first couple of rounds, but uh, I was able to come on uh, uh, in my own uh, a rhythm and uh, catch up and did the job. Well, you sure did. Let's take a look at the uh, knockout in the 11th round. It just kind of came suddenly. Uh, that left hook that you had, had been uh, throwing without effect, you were able to get it through here. Yeah, well, uh, they told me at the, the beginning of the fight, just go out there and just throw punches. But I couldn't get my rhythm uh, going until the, the, the later rounds, and uh, everything came on real good and uh, was able to do the job. All right, now you mentioned uh, that uh, you, you've got hopes uh, for the next fight. Uh, Lou Duva, who, do who would you like to have next? Uh, we'd like to fight almost anybody at all. We'd like to fight the, really the winner of George Foreman and Lou Savarese. I think that's a good fight. It would be a makeup for a good fight for television over yeah. there. But we're going, we're going to Sacramento, June 7th, and we're going to fight on HBO. That's where we're going. Okay, well, we'll certainly be watching, even though that uh, does not have the same call letters as our network does. What Nonetheless, you congratulations to you, David uh, Tua. Uh, you pulled it out in 11, and you're still unbeaten. And good luck on your run to the heavyweight championship. We'll be back here at Bally's Park Place in a moment. We're back live at Atlantic City, where David Tua scored an 11th round knockout over Oleg Meskayev to uh, continue his unbeaten run and move to 27 and 0. And for Gil Clancy, I'm Tim Ryan saying so long from Atlantic City. The Budweiser Boxing Series continues on CBS Sunday, May 4th as Arturo Gatti faces Calvin Grove. Tomorrow at 2 o'clock Eastern, it's the Interstate Batteries 500 from the Texas Motor Speedway. Congratulations to David Tua. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports. It's the